Welcome to episode seven of the Lone Hockey Podcast. And today we're going to be talking about a really fascinating player and one of the most tactically advanced players in the 2024 NHL draft class who's drafted fourth overall by the Columbus Blue Jackets, Caden Lindstrom. Now, Caden Lindstrom is a center playing for Medicine Hat in the WHL. This past season, he had some injury issues and he, his season unfortunately got cut short. So we weren't able to necessarily see a ton of them, but at the same time, He's in for a big year next season. He's going to have a really big showing, and he's going to dominate the WHL for sure if he's able to get a full season in. And so with Lindstrom, what's really fascinating about him is we see the natural center ability and the ability to also thrive in the wing. But for him, he's going to be someone at the NHL level who's going to be definitely a natural center by far. And he fits the role so seamlessly because of his ability to attack the middle ice and ability to find interior ice. He uses his toe caps and angles his toe caps in a way to find interior ice very consistently. And obviously he's been doing a lot of skill work and gym work the past few years to really hone in on who he can be as a player. And from his transition a couple of years ago out of major AAA to where he is in the WHL, now it's really fascinating development for him because he's really understood how to use his body, how to link together his hockey sense, how to link together his puck skills, and how to really create the whole package for himself in becoming a top five pick in this year's draft class. And Lindstrom has a lot of potential moving in the future as well. And there's there's so much to like about his game, and especially off the rush. That's one of the most unique pinpoints when I evaluate his game and when I scout his game is the off-rush threat and the ability to utilize his off-rush thr- off play as a puck carrier and he's so dynamic when it comes to carrying the puck off the rush and how he can not only carry the puck but how he can rush the puck up ice he's a transition threat but he also can defer to teammates when necessarily really well so as the middleman on entry can kick out wide when needed and he can move directly into his space after that so that way he can find a lead pass from a teammate but he's really good at the puck rusher he's not a fit to be assertive and aggressive when rushing the puck up ice and neutral ice and so dynamic when it comes to it, because the last few years, like I mentioned, he's really understood how to link together his puck skill in a very dynamic way. So the hands element has been really intriguing to watch from him because the playmaking has continued to shine and not only that pass first game, but how he's able to control pucks within that, that bigger radius of his body. Cause obviously he's got longer reach. So he's got to utilize that to his advantage and he's done a really good job with that thus far. And there's a lot of, efficiency within Lindstrom's puck control and how he's able to utilize that stride extension element and his size on because he's a big center. I believe he's around six four. And the ability to use that range, you have to use that range, especially as a bigger player, to be able to leverage contact, leverage puck protection, be able to leverage body position. As a bigger player, it's really important. And we saw emphasis on that a couple of years ago with Kirby Dock in the 2019 NHL draft class where the emphasis on him was to, he had really good skating elements and really good foundational elements as well, but just to learn how to use body position elements more to be able to link together the rest of his game and to be able to extend possession sequences. And Lindstrom, he already does a really good job of rolling off contact and understanding how to use his skating and feet in a way to avoid contact. So he's really elusive already with his feet, which is really good to see. But the body position element, it's going to be really important for him to develop at a higher level so that way he can maintain that center of gravity and strength on pucks once he gets to the NHL level. And he's going to have no problem adjusting the NHL level one day because he's already got a lot of game-breaking elements and a lot of foundational elements that he's developed within the last couple of years to be able to get to where he is now. And just that stride extension and that ability to cover ice is really effective when it comes to him. And... Because of that ability, he can forecheck and layer in different situations. And he's so effective when it comes to his forechecking and using his reach and using his stick, using his body, using his feet, using a lot of different ways to control that space and be able to control ice and angle plays and angle certain situations. And another big thing for him, he's a really big threat off first touch with the puck inside the offensive zone. And when he gets first touch, he understands where to lead pucks into. So when he gets that first touch, he does it with a purpose. So when he gets that touch and he gets that touch in the puck, he's going into space. He's trying to find space somewhere. 
And he's able to maneuver into that space with speed, which is really unique and really translatable in terms of what he's going to be able to do heading into the future. Obviously, he's done a lot at the WHL, so it doesn't really matter anymore that's translatable at the WHL because he can do it so regularly. It's going to matter more when he's going to come up through the AHL potentially and through the NHL because he can't play in the AHL until he is 20 years old. So there's a shot he could make the NHL in the near future, but just as that as a possibility. And it's very important to understand that as well. And, but he's really good at leading pucks into space in general. And we see that a lot with his puck handling off the rush and coming on breakout situations. He can lead the puck into ice for himself that creates favorable outcomes for himself. And he's not too worried about what the surrounding players around him are doing too much. He's just looking to control with his instincts. And that's really noticeable for a player at his age and his size to have that already with the hockey sense element and the timing to link together everything else and link together that puck control element as well. And the other thing is with Lindstrom, there's more well-roundedness that has come to his frame over time. And just imagine how he continues to fill out and how he continues to get stronger once he does fill out that size within his body and that strength within his body, he can be much more effective when it comes to center of gravity and being able to leverage contact, leverage board battles, all sorts of different situations. So I really good at it. And he is really good at being able to slip around guys and use his feet to be elusive. And it would be interesting to see. You won't necessarily with him want to put it on too much muscle because if you put on too much muscle with him, it could actually negate some of his, skating impact and someone's puck skill impact and speed elements. So it, once he's able to get to a, a lean mass, that's still relatively suitable for him. Then he's going to be able to get to a point where he's going to understand how to leverage his body much better and be able to extend those possession sequences. Like I mentioned very briefly before and with those posture elements and how he's able to control his frame a lot better is really become more well-rounded the past few seasons coming out of midget triple a as well and with Lindstrom, i see a lot of rope hints in his game actually and rope hints around the same size rope hints is really effective off first touch rope hints is really effective in neutralized carrying being a puck rusher being a transition threat and with hints he's really evolved from a two-way center to a really dynamic offensive center the last few years who he used to be more of a middle six slash bottom nine type player and he's really evolved into a top line center now and he's been a strong player for the Dallas Stars in very recent years and he's become better and so much better in terms of his reps inside the offensive zone and controlling possession controlling pace controlling ice and being able to lead himself into space when he has the puck as well so there's a lot of similarities I see in both those two players and how they're able to create play driving elements within their game and they're able to use those play di play driving elements really effectively as well. And like I mentioned, the two-way game is also really noticeable because Lindstrom does play a sound two-way positional game already. There's maturity in his defensive zone habits, just maturity in how he's, how he's able to control his stick, how he's able to position his stick, how he's able to angle guys, how he's able to cut ice in half. There's a lot of different elements that can be utilized in PK situations. And five on five situations that make him very effective defensively already for his age. So really good to see that out of Lindstrom and how it's going to continue to help his trajectory heading in the future as well. And this is another thing that's very similar between Hints and Lindstrom is their ability to always move their feet. So you always see some ability to move their feet. They're using linear crossovers to build speed on their routes they're a threat in interior space in the offensive zone, movement patterns off the puck. So there's a lot of different elements when we're talking about Hints and Lindstrom and comparison between the two and how well those two are really suited for each other and how they compare really well to each other when talking about how they link together off puck elements to on puck elements. So they're spacing off the puck, how it translates to space when they have the puck and how they're able to handle space with the puck on their stick. So Hintz is a really unique center, obviously, the, the two-way elements, but also the ability to be a three-zone threat as a center is really unique. And Hintz has obviously evolved so much more, and he's become so much better in recent seasons. And 
with Lindstrom, we already see a lot of maturity in terms of a lot of different elements in his game already. So that upward trajectory could be very positive for him and how his NHL success continues to round out in the near future, how he could become a really big NHL player in the near future, depending on his trajectory coming out of the WHL. And another thing, and we mentioned this yesterday briefly with Macklin Celebrini, is how we see a lot of younger centers nowadays, they're, they're being taught more how to be a shot first player and not afraid to be a shot first player coming off the rush and coming down the offensive zone. And yes, there's times where you have to defer to teammates and be able to pass to certain guys in certain situations. But at the same time, being able to utilize the shot is so important, especially as a center, because the centers, they often, oftentimes it's very easy to stereotype them as pass first players because it's easy for them to be labeled as that because they can defer to guys and be able to create sense of structure within the team as well. But Lindstrom is a really big threat as a shooter as well. And he's not afraid to shoot coming off the rush, coming downhill, coming off the flanks. He, he can build speed coming through the outside lanes and be able to be a threat that way as a shooter as well. But with Lindstrom, he has a really game-breaking shot. And it's going to be learning more about how to shoot inside deception for him and how to utilize deception more. Obviously, he's a really good pass first player. The shooting element's really intriguing because if you can build more deception and manipulation elements inside of it with Lindstrom, he's going to continue to be a prominent shooter in the future as well. And that's going to be really unique and really interesting to watch from a skill development perspective, how he can continue to link together elements of shot to translate that to the NHL as well. And we mentioned this briefly and how astute that Lindstrom is off the puck and on the puck. So he links together his off puck and on puck roots. And off puck is really effective staying between checks, being able to be a close support option, creating those small area triangles, being able to provide space for teammates nowadays is so important. And Lindstrom, what he's able to do a really good job of is providing that space and being able to be in space in almost constant ways. And that the movement pattern, patterning that he has without the puck allows him to he has to maintain that element because he's still moving his feet all the time so that helps in terms of the movement patterning off the movement patterning off the puck and when it comes to his on puck play it's, it becomes so much easier for him to to link together his on puck habits because the off puck play he's already in and already positioning himself in really good space in the ice and all of the ice and all three zones and especially inside the offensive zone it's where it's most noticeable and he just does a really good job of that i see a lot of potential for lindstrom to be at least at minimum a 60 to 70 plus point score in the nhl as a center potential for him to be a first line center in the league a very consistent center and how he can be in that top six role, I could be a two-way guy, a PK guy, a PP guy, play a lot of different situations for his team. It could be late game situations and Ozone and D zone as well. So there's a lot of different situations where Lindstrom can thrive and in heading into the future and how he can be able to maintain that consistency within his game over time. And also he's very competitive on pucks. He's not afraid to get to corner battles. He's not afraid to be physical. He's not afraid to use his reach and size to get range of space so that the size element really helps him because especially if compared to a smaller player where they don't necessarily have as much reach and as much radius and how they're able to control space with Lindstrom, he's able to get to that space much faster because he has a longer reach and a longer feet, longer stride extension, and just bigger size in general. So that's allowing him to be more effective in those situations and like I mentioned at the start of this, he's tactically probably the most unique forward in the 2024 draft in terms of the nuance of his game, the patterning, the hockey sense, the shot, playmaking, two-way habits, off-rush play, the ability to be a neutral zone threat. Like There's so many different three-zone elements that Lindstrom brings and that he's so effective with already that makes him such a threat, and he's so unique to watch. It's such a unique player to evaluate coming out of the draft class that Columbus was able to bring him into. And it's going to be really interesting to see how Lynchham 
continues to develop within his trajectory heading into the near future and heading into seasons beyond that point as well. And he's going to be a great player. He's going to be a great player for a long time. It's just a matter of development, how Columbus is able to develop him. What I don't like about Columbus is how some of their guys in recent years, like, for example, Cole Sillinger and Kent Johnson, they arguably, and I say arguably, arguably might have rushed him a little bit early. And then that second year for each of them, they had to put him in the AHL. So they each got a full first season in the NHL. And then the second season is when they're in the AHL. So when it comes to a player like Lindstrom, you got to be a little bit more patient with him because given his size and given his ability, he's going to take a little bit more time to create that sense of well-roundedness in his game. At the same time, there's already a lot of maturity in his game. So he could be a guy that comes into an NHL role sooner rather than later, but there's there's so much potential with Lindstrom and how he can continue, how he can continue to improve his trajectory over the course of time and in the near future as well. So he's a really fascinating player to evaluate. 